We'll start by unboxing our Redline CNC spindle kit. Inside of the big box, we will find three smaller boxes. The first box that we're opening here is the spindle motor itself, along with the four included collets. And those four collets range in sizes from 1 8 inch all the way up to 1 half inch. Here you can have an up close look at the spindle motor and you'll notice it is marked as 1.5 kilowatt 110 volt, but setup will be the same across all models. Our next box will contain all of our cables as well as our collet wrenches. There is a communication cable to connect the VFD to the controller, a spindle cable for the spindle motor to the VFD, and two communication cables for the digital readout available in two different lengths depending on how you prefer to set your machine up. And finally, our last box will include our VFD with the digital readout packaged with it. Upon closer inspection of the VFD, we can see a few different stickers. On the side for the connections for the digital readout, there are no stickers. On the back, there is a safety notice as well as a field evaluation sticker. And on the right side, there are a few warning labels as well as labels for the connections on the VFD. You'll also notice that on the side of the digital readout, there is a button labeled manual mode. This button can be pushed in or released to toggle between manual and automatic spindle control. To remove the protective film from the front of the digital readout, pull the red knob off of its post, then lift the plastic off and place the knob back where you removed it from. On the left side of the VFD, we're going to install the included 12 amp fuse. It will be in a small plastic baggie taped to the VFD packaging. Pull the fuse out of the baggie, put it into the fuse slot, and turn clockwise to secure it in place. Our next step is to connect our communications cable to both our VFD and to our CNC controller. On one end of the cable, you'll find a two pin RS-485 connector that will connect to the VFD here. We'll push that connection in, then turn clockwise to lock it in place. Next, we can connect our 25 pin breakout board adapter to the back of the BuildBotix controller. Simply push this in place and secure it with a flathead screwdriver. With our communications cable installed, we can now move to installing our digital readout. In this version, I'll be setting this up with the digital readout attached to the side of the VFD. So we're going to remove these bolts and use them to secure the DRO to the side of the VFD. Before mounting the digital readout to the side of the VFD, we'll first need to connect our cables. Starting with this RJ45 cable, we'll plug this in with the 90 degree angle on the back of the digital readout. With that cable in place, we can now attach it to the side of our VFD using the screws that we removed just a moment ago. You can use a 2mm hex key to secure both of these bolts in place, making sure not to over tighten them. Next, we'll connect our 3 pin connector to our DRO and to our VFD on the side. After connecting our 3 pin connector to our DRO, we'll also connect our RJ485 connection so that the DRO and the VFD can communicate between each other. Next, we'll install our spindle cable to our VFD, aligning the pins, then screwing it in place. Next, we're going to mount our spindle into our spindle mount on the Onefinity. With our spindle in the correct position, we'll use a 4mm hex key to secure it in place. Next, we'll attach our spindle cable to our spindle motor aligning the pins, pushing it in place, and then twisting it clockwise to secure it. Lastly, we'll connect our AC power cable. We'll plug that into the AC power connection on the VFD, as well as the other end plugging into the wall. Finally, we're going to enable our tool by going to the flyout menu in the top left corner. Then we're going to select tool about halfway down on the list. We will then Click on our drop down menu and select the red line VFD option. Then we'll make sure we press the save button in the top left corner before returning to our control page. Finally, we're going to use our M3 command on the MDI. We're going to put in an M3 space S15,000 to make the spindle spin at 15,000 RPMs. Here it is spinning up. And once we can hear it level out, we know it's good and we'll go back to our MDI and use an M5 command to stop it. 
And with that, we've completed the setup of the Onefinity Redline VFD and Spindle Kit. Now, it's time to get to carving.